where we left off with our our animation project is that in the last video we ran a timeline test using our stage we ran, ran a little animation test and that helped us see what changes were needed and i made those changes in my assets file and then brought those over so what you can see is that i have them as groups now these ones that i changed okay what i'm going to do is now merge if i think those look good i'm going to merge those groups and in those groups were all the components from my assets and i just merge the group by right clicking on it and then saying merge group and that will turn it into one flat layer same thing here merge group Okay, to run an animation test where I am so far, I simply go to my timeline. I'll make this a little bit bigger. I can hit Command-0 to fit it on the screen. I use a little hamburger, and I say make frames from layers. I have 11 frames right now. I'm not even done with all my keyframes yet. I'm going to hit Shift to select them all and set the timing. I'm going to put 0.3 seconds and it's gonna play through forever. And it's playing through backwards. And honestly, in some ways, I really like that. Feels more like the Sarlacc pit digesting the creature, which in some ways is more fun to me than, than what I intended with my rough storyboard. But in order to get it to play in the right order, I select everything, I click on the hamburger, and I say reverse frames. So here we go. We see the setting, and then we see the, the creature emerge out of it. And it really just looks like the creature is popping up into the scene. All right, so that animation test is working. It fits my storyboard, but maybe I want to change it. And this is the time to do that. And when you see things in movement, sometimes you can change your idea for what's working. I think that works a lot better. And at this point, that means I have to change something in my storyboard. So if I go to my files and I look at my rough storyboard, What's supposed to happen is the creature pops out and then shakes and then walks off, right? So what I might have is the creature come in to the frame, shake, and then just kind of standing there, and then the animation picks up with what I already have, gets swallowed by the plant. And then another creature comes in, shakes, gets swallowed by the plant, right? So if all that makes sense, then that's what I'm gonna change. And so I can make those changes on the fly, which happens in animation all the time. It's why you do an animatic, it's why you do rough storyboards, and then you can change story elements, especially for a, a short scene like this. So before I make any additional layers, any additional frames on the stage, I need to take my timeline frames, bring them to the trash. And I wanna remind myself where my last frame is, so I'm just gonna turn that one on. I'm not sure I like this jump in the animation either, because it the creature is kind of just popping up in front. It doesn't seem to move to the right, and I feel like it needs to move to the right a little bit. So I'm gonna mark that as red and rethink that one. And to do that, I'll hit Command S, save, and I'm gonna go back to my stage file and I'm going to find that layer group. And that's why my sketches are helpful. So this is that layer group. And in that layer group, I'm gonna make a change just by moving this character right to very close to the edge. And maybe I'm going to puppet warp them a little bit even though this is my hero character and I'm keeping this as a smart object, I can still puppet warp. In newer versions of Photoshop, it will allow you to puppet warp without rasterizing. 
It just takes a little bit longer to process. And I'm just going to puppet warp it so I can shift the positioning a little bit. And just kind of squeeze the character a little bit more into the frame, like so. So now I can see the position of the character before was like that. And now it feels like they'll kind of drop into this place. You see that, that movement of the feet. And it's going to feel heavier because it's more distance than I have been moving. So animation speed is about how much changes between each frame. I don't like how the tail and the back feet just drop in place. So I want to give that a little mo move, movement too. So I'll go back to my creature and I'll do puppet warp again. I'll lock the things I want in place. But then the tail Actually, I might even push the ear. Well, we'll see. I'm trying not to touch the edges because that can cause what's called a tangency. I'm putting too many here. If I right click, I can clear all the pins. I got to keep it kind of simpler. So I just want to lock these feet and then just push it from the back get those feet to, to drop in a little bit. And then with the head, I might even leave the head there. We'll see. Then maybe shift the middle back. because This might be a little too much of a distortion. And if I decide I need more than that, well, then I might need to create a new frame. So I like that positioning for that frame. Now, I can bring this over to my stage right away. And this is how. I'm going to take that frame along with its sketch. I'm going to put it into a group. right? And then I'm simply going to pop this out, and then drop the group onto my stage. And because it's a square, I just line it up and it should snap in place. I can always have my guides on as well, and those help it. And if I need more guides, I can put those in. That's why we crop to a square. It's an eight by eight inch by eight inch square. And then I just need to put that group in the right place. And there we go. Now I'm going to keep my old one there. That's the red one. And then I'm going to run an animation test. I'm going to merge the group. So this is the one I'm testing. I'll make it orange and run a quick animation test. So this is trying to like fix an issue. Right. And then set it for 0.3 seconds. And play. Oh, and then I have to get rid of, what frame is it? This one. So I drag that down to the trash, because that's the, the one I'm replacing. So it goes like that now. And that, that positioning just seems a little bit better for the plank grabbing it. And if I reverse them with the original intent, that's going to look a little bit more like the plant is spitting it out. So sometimes just placement matters a lot. There are some shadows that, that blink on and then turn off. That's annoying. And so that's where I go to my history and remember things I didn't do before like erase that shadow out. So that's why it's so helpful. Really, when I opened it, 
yeah, so this group, it's why it's so helpful to have a stage and an assets file separate. So I can bring my assets back in because now I have that new frame I'm going to add already in my assets right there. And I know it's going to work, but I've got to clean up some of the other things. So this group, what I have, I have this and then this, that one works, and then this, and that's the problem where the shadow shows up. So what I needed to do was to rasterize the layer style, which had the drop shadow, and then I can erase it. These are the issues particular to my animation choices and design. You are going to come up with your own issues. And I might want a little bit of that shadow, like where the paw is, but not on the rock. So it goes from that to that to not to that anymore, but to a new one. To that, to that. Yes, I think that was the only problem with the shadow. I might want to now fix this one, this last one. So now once I fix those, I can merge these groups. You have to have them turned on, and then you just right click and merge, turned on, right click and merge. So really understanding our layers, and then we can kind of play it through. Make sure that shadow doesn't distract. Yes, the rock moves a little bit, but that's just kind of funny. Okay, and we're getting rid of this one. And we are replacing it again with this one. Since I went back in the history, move that group right into my stage. Use the move tool, move the whole group, no matter how many layers of assets you're using for it, lock it in, then I can merge it, then I can get rid of the old one. And then when I test out the animation, make frames from layers, set it to 0.3, animation is so repetitive, especially testing it. It's why I know I'm a, a editorial print guy, not so much a motion graphics guy, because doing this stuff over and over again kind of gets to me. But here we go. Yep, then that shadow isn't a problem anymore. It gets kind of sucked in. Makes sense, at least for a GIF animation. Now I need to get the character into that spot. I have to move them into that spot. And that's how I'm going to finish off. I don't know if I'm going to have time to make the character shake. That would be great. That's like, that's a goal for, for a little later. Because that would take maybe more frames than I want to do right now with the walking cycle. But it would be done in the same way. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take my animation test, bring it to the trash, all those timelines, save my stage, go back to my assets, and start building my additional frames, keyframes, from this group. So duplicating from this group. So now I've got all of these. I'm going to duplicate all of them. Command J and then move them all down to the next keyframe. Just getting through my story here. Turn all those off. All right, the next keyframe is this one, the shaking. And instead, I'm just going to have my creature just kind of stand there. And I need to turn off. Let's see. If I turn off the puppet warp, it will be like that. Because you can do puppet warp as an effect. So let me duplicate it. I'm going to try to do a whole movement cycle here. And I want to work between these positions. 